Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, you get to choose which type of weapon you would want to survive a horror movie. But before we begin, if you could just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. So last week, we tested out five of our newest weapons, and you guys went to the community tab and voted for which one you liked best. And it was a tough decision, because there were some really cool weapons last week. But you guys went ahead and voted for the Stealth Hawkbill Karambit. And it was such an excellent choice. I absolutely love this weapon. I don't know if you could tell by my enthusiasm, but this was definitely my pick last week. So great choice, guys. This week, we're going to try something a little bit different. I want you to imagine that you're in a horror movie and you're out in the middle of the woods and you've got some horror movie villain chasing you down and all of a sudden you see this table and Amanda has added five different weapons to the table and you can only choose one to fight off this horror movie villain. Which one do you choose? So without further ado, Amanda, hand me the first package. There you go. Make sure you guys go to the community tab and vote for which one you like best. All right, let's see what we got. Kind of a big one. Sometimes the big ones are cool. Okay, and the first weapon that you can choose from is the tactical push sword. Ooh, this is a good one. This is a great one for this scenario. <laughs> okay, look at this. That is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna open this up really quick. Wow. <laughs> So this is clearly a fantasy weapon, but it's one of those really cool ones. I actually like this. So let's see. I'm going to slip this over my wrist, and it goes kind of on my forearm, and then I can kind of hold it like this. I mean, how cool is that? So it could be held like that, or we could hold it like this. I think it looks better kind of upside down like this. So that looks pretty cool. I could actually get a pretty good thrust with that. So look at that. That is awesome. Okay, so let's just take a closer look at this. First off, we can tell that this is one solid piece of stainless steel that has a black finish to it. Um, looks really stealthy. I actually like that a lot. That's pretty cool. Um, so this is all one solid piece, and then when you get it, you actually have to add the handle to it and add the forearm strap to it. So there's a little bit of assembly required, but it's, it's pretty darn easy. So if we look at the blade, we can see that there's serration here, and then this part of the blade, kind of sharp, and this part of the blade is definitely sharp, and the tip is definitely sharp, so that's pretty cool. And then we can see that there's venting in the blade here. Um, that's really just there for aesthetic appeal because this thing isn't heavy at all. It actually uh, weighs about one pound, four ounces, which for me, that's like nothing. Feels pretty nice. Uh, the wrist strap has this little nylon strap on it, so it's adjustable to whatever size forearm you have. I'd actually need to adjust this a little bit because it's a little bit tight, but yeah, that fits, fits pretty nicely. I actually like that a lot. It is approximately 27 inches overall with a 14 inch blade and the handle and the little arm strap piece here appear to be made out of some sort of ABS. So it feels like it's pretty solid. It actually feels like a fairly solid weapon for a fantasy weapon. It does come with this nylon sheath, but really there's not much else to really say about it. So I think we should go ahead and test it out. So I'm gonna take this outside and let's see what this thing can do. Well, that was awesome. Despite the fact that this is clearly a fantasy weapon, I think it would actually do pretty well against a horror movie villain. So I'm pretty impressed with it. It destroyed that soda bottle, destroyed that pineapple. So definitely a really cool little weapon. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and put this away. And Amanda, grab your next item for me. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, what is your next choice for a weapon against this horror movie villain? All right, the next weapon is the Comfort Grip Knuckle Duster. Okay, seems a little small to me against a horror movie villain, but uh, you know what? Maybe it'll work. 
Okay, this is pretty cool. This is pretty neat. I actually, there's some things I really like about this. Uh, first off, on the palm grip, we can see that it's got a really nice kind of cushioned area there, which um, for those of you who have used brass knuckles before, you know that the area that kind of hurts your hand is that area on the palm grip because it kind of digs into your palm a little bit. So having this extra little area here will make a big difference. So it looks like it weighs about three and a half ounces. It's approximately four and a half inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall and the metal is only about three sixteenths inch thick so that's fairly thin metal for the knuckle part itself but that doesn't really matter because we've got this huge palm grip area here that makes it really really nice and comfortable so I don't know what type of metal that is. I'm gonna guess that this is some sort of zinc aluminum. It just kind of looks like it, feels like it. And then it's got a really nice gold finish to it. So the contrast between the knuckle and then the palm grip actually looks really nice. So this palm grip, it looks like it's probably made out of an ABS of some sort but it's got this kind of square type grip to it, uh, which means that it's gonna have a kind of a non-slip grip and it's actually really comfortable in my hands. So I actually like that a lot. Um, we can also see that there's a threaded hole right in the middle there. So if you wanted to add it to a belt buckle, you definitely could. But with knuckle dusters, it's very important you check your local laws on them because the laws are really strict on this kind of thing. And the laws also pertain to what city you're in, what state you're in, what country you're in, what municipality you're in. So it's important to check your own local laws just to make sure that you're not doing anything wrong. So when it comes to how you hold a knuckle duster, there's actually one or two ways that you generally see people holding them. You'll often see people holding them lower on their knuckle and kind of striking with them like that, or sometimes you'll see them putting them a little bit higher on your knuckle and swiping with them. So that actually depends on the size of your hand and the style of knuckle duster that it is. So what I like to tell people to do is when you get a knuckle duster, just really, really lightly strike something kind of soft like a punching bag in both different punching styles just to find out what works best for you. So for this one, let's just test it out a little bit. So then this palm grip on this one is a little bit smaller, so it fits in my hand pretty nicely in a normal fist style. So let's actually just try that first. This is pretty hard. Okay, so that actually feels really nice for me. Uh, what you have to be careful of though, is if you're holding it in the wrong grip for your hand, you can actually break your fingers. So you gotta be really careful. And then the other way is to kind of hold it a little bit higher on your knuckles and kind of swipe with it. And then that way you can see that the palm grip is kind of hitting this part of your palm. So let's try that too. Okay, so for this knuckle, that actually hurt my hand a lot more. And the problem with that is you can actually hurt your wrist by doing it that way um, or hurt your palm. So for these knuckles on my size hand, it feels better going like this. So I'm actually gonna take these things outside and try striking something with it. All right, let's do it. Oh my goodness, that was so much fun. I don't think you guys realize how much fun I have here. I mean, I get to hit watermelons all day, that's awesome. Um, so this thing was actually really impressive. I did try striking it both different ways. I tried just a standard punch. I also tried a swipe. As you can see, they both did magnificent against the watermelon. It felt better on my hand using a regular strike, but both actually were fairly comfortable. Um, so definitely go to the community tab and vote for which weapon you like best. Uh, this would definitely be a contender for that. I think it would do pretty darn well against a horror movie villain. So pretty awesome. But I'm gonna go ahead and put that away. And Amanda, what is our next item? There you go. Awesome, thank you. Okay, and our next weapon is the Tactical Trailing Point Karambit. Love it. I love karambits, as you guys know. So let's take a look at this one and see what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, so first off, you can see that it's got a really nice Kydex sheath on it, uh, which I really like Kydex because it's form fitted to the blade so it's not gonna fall out on you. Uh, we can also see that it's got this belt clip on there um, and it's the type that actually has a lock on it so we can just open it up and then hook it on your belt and then lock it if you want, which is really cool. I also like this type too because you can unscrew this and then switch it around so that it works for a left-hander or a right-hander, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at the blade on this thing. 
Oh, wow. Okay, gotcha. So there's the trailing point right there. Okay, so this is pretty sweet. So as we can tell, this is actually made out of an 8CR14 MOV steel. 8CR14 um, MOV is a really good steel because it's super hard. It's also very corrosion resistant and it's very wear resistant. So this thing's gonna hold up for you really nicely. So let's see as far as comfort goes on this thing. Oh, that's nice. That's actually really nice. I like that. <laughs> okay, so a couple of things. First off, we can tell that there's no jimping on the pommel ring, which um, you've probably heard me say this before in my video. I actually typically prefer to have no jimping on it or very light jimping on it because when you're actually switching from your modern grip into your extended grip, sometimes it can be rough on your fingers to actually be switching back and forth. So when you've got no jimping on there, it makes it nice and easy. And I actually have really good control over this just without any jimping at all. But a little bit of jimping's fine. But that actually feels really comfortable. And then let's put it into forward grip. So I guess with this knife, I would probably want there to be jimping up here. That kind of bothers me a little bit because I could get a little more control if there was jimping up here. So I guess if I were to buy this knife, I would take a Dremel and actually add some jimping myself just so that I have thumb groove so I have just a little more control of the knife. So pretty awesome though. And if we look at the blade, oh, that's super sharp. We can see that it's got this really nice stone wash finish to it. That looks awesome. Uh, the handle looks like that's made out of a G10. And that's actually really comfortable. It's actually a really nice handle. Uh, it's got good grip to it. It actually uh, would be very slip resistant. So a really nice handle. I actually really like this a lot. I think we could do quite a bit of damage with it. So the overall length of this knife is approximately eight inches long, and the blade length is approximately four inches, and the knife weighs approximately 3.5 ounces. So that's actually super comfortable for me. I, I like that a lot. I have a lot of control of this knife. Um, so really, there's nothing that I can say that I really don't like about this knife. I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, but let's go ahead outside and actually try striking something with it. All right, let's do it. Well, that was so much fun. I absolutely love hitting things with these weapons. Um, I really like this Krambit. It was super comfortable in my hand. It was really nice going from modern grip into extended grip. I don't know if you could see with that pineapple, but I went into extended grip, swiped with it. Very comfortable. So I absolutely love this. I think it's an awesome Krambit. Let's go ahead and put that away and move on to our next weapon. All right, Amanda, what do you got next for me? There you go. Thank you so much, appreciate it. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, and our next weapon is the Japanese Nada Machete. Okay, let's take a look at this. Interesting. Okay, so a Japanese Nada is a tool that has been used in Japan for hundreds of years for chopping kindling, pruning trees, and clearing brush. But it can also be used as a weapon. All right, so let's take a look at this. Wow, that is cool. I mean, I guess I would describe this as like a chisel point machete because it's got that kind of chisel point on the end. So you could actually chisel with it. It's a very heavy machete. So it's definitely a very thick piece of metal on this thing. So we can tell that that is made out of a very thick 440 stainless steel that has a stone wash finish on it. it. Actually looks really beautiful. And I like how the handle is more of like a natural wood handle. We can also see that it is full tang, goes all the way through that handle. It's very comfortable. It's a, it's a nice ergonomic grip on this thing. I actually like that a lot. Um, yeah, very comfortable. The weight on this is approximately one pound, three ounces. So I could get some good momentum off of this blade. I actually like that a lot. The overall length is approximately 19 and a quarter inches. And the blade length is approximately 12 and one eighth inches. If we take a look at the handle, we can see that there is a lanyard hole in the handle, which is nice, so we could actually add a wrist strap to it. Um, that way we're not gonna lose it. 
looks like the blade, ooh, that's super sharp. That is a very, very sharp blade. So um, as far as a weapon to use against a horror movie villain, this could be it. This is pretty awesome. And it comes with this really nice nylon sheath. And that is a super thick sheath. So I actually like that a lot. And it would have to be thick because that blade is so darn sharp. If it wasn't that thick, I could see that actually breaking through the sheath. So pretty nice. There's not really anything else to say about this. Just a really cool weapon. So I think we should go ahead and take this outside and see what we can do with it. All right, let's do it. Holy cow, I did not expect that at all. This blade was so sharp, and because of this little point on the chisel end up here, it actually sliced through the basketball just fine, which is kind of more difficult than you'd think. Sliced through the watermelon like nothing, and then that soda bottle did not stand a chance. So this is definitely a good contender for this week's best weapon against a horror movie villain. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that away, and let's move on to our next item. All right, Amanda. What do you have next for me? There you go. Thank you, I appreciate it. Ooh, it's a big one. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, and our next item is the hammered steel katana. Ooh, I absolutely love this sword. I saw it come in, absolutely beautiful. So first off, it comes with this nice black cloth sword bag. So that's good for storage, kind of like that. All right, and here is the sword itself. So upon first glance, it doesn't look like anything special, but let's actually take off the scabbard and look at that blade. Wow, that is so cool. You don't see things like this very often. This is really cool. So that is a hammered steel blade and that just looks phenomenal. I love that. Um, so this blade itself is made from a T10 tool steel, uh, which is awesome for katanas because it's a very hard steel. It's also very rare resistant and it can hold an edge for a long time. So as far as steels for a katana, it's absolutely perfect. I love this. Okay, so if we look at the suka, we can see that uh, it actually has authentic ray skin in there. And that is absolutely beautiful. Um, a lot of people like imitation ray skin, but when you're looking for a higher end sword, Authentic ray skin is a good sign that it's a good quality sword. So I actually really like that. We can see that there's some dragon manuki in there. And uh, let's look at the suba. So the suba appears to be made out of some sort of zinc aluminum, but I actually really like the modern design of the suba. I think it looks really cool, kind of sleek and modern, which looks awesome. Um, the scabbard is made out of wood and it looks like it's got a black paint splatter design to it. So that looks pretty cool. I actually kind of like the stealthy look of that. It looks like the sword weight is approximately two pounds, 1.5 ounces. The weight with the scabbard is approximately two pounds, 10 ounces. And the sword length is approximately 40 inches. So that gives you a pretty good reach if you're gonna use this against a horror movie villain. So that's pretty awesome. So if you look closely at the blade, you can see that there is an authentic clay tempered hamon line on there, which is actually really important when you're using a steel that's this hard. Uh, so that's a really good sign that this is a high quality sword blade as well. So really there's nothing I don't like about this sword. I love the look of it. It's gonna be a good quality sword that's gonna last you a long time. It's definitely full tang. Very nice sword, so I'm excited to actually test this thing out. And I think this is a great contender as far as a weapon uh, to use against a horror movie villain. I think this was an awesome choice, Amanda. So let's go ahead and take this outside and actually test it out a little bit. All right, let's do it. Well, 
Well, that was so awesome. I absolutely love this sword. In fact, I think I'm going to keep this one for myself. It's such a cool sword. And that T10 steel just sliced through the watermelon, sliced through the pineapple, sliced through the soda bottle. No problem at all. So I absolutely love this sword. So make sure you go to the community tab and vote for which weapon you would want the most if you're being chased through the woods by a horror movie villain. Uh, but if you have any questions on any of these items, definitely leave them in the comments below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. And check out KarateMart.com because we've got all sorts of new, really cool weapons on there right now. But until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday.